at the mother actually and there's a kind of we had a kind of binary binary positions about it because she's either an absolute monster with no justification mm. or she was a victim of her own circumstance which in the end we kind of went more for the latter but, but it's not necessarily justifiable what she does but it's understandable yeah you have, I suppose yeah. You, ha- you would have to do that and particularly yeah. you have to do this Andrea because not only do you have to play the character of Hannah you have to play all of the other characters so you have to understand Hannah's perspective and indeed her mother's perspective, which is which is quite a task in, in some ways. How does that actually work in the realisation of, of the show itself? How do you switch from character to character or how are both characters manifested to us if we're at the show? So uh, mostly through physical difference and vocal difference. Um, we have gone through many development periods with this piece. So we've gone through a period where each character had different props or different costumes and we got rid of those, simplified it down. So now it's purely me changing my physical mannerisms and my voice to, to change character. Although the the predominantly you are playing the character of Hannah. That yes. is that is the character who you're you're representing most of the time. Had you read the memoir and because um, it's, it's you, it was your concept this in the beginning. What was it that struck you about it as potentially like, performable material? So. I've always been interested in people who go into institutions and what happens to their identity. So they effectively disappear, but there's a story behind the walls. And I was watching Behind the Walls, which is an RTE documentary, and Hannah's story was on that. Mm. And I immediately Googled to see if there was a film about her or a play about her already, and surprisingly there wasn't. So I got the book, read the book, and thought, this story is so unique because it's a first-hand account of a time in an institution, she not only got out after such a long period of time, which is quite unusual, but then she wrote a book about it and then she became a minor celebrity. And the way she wrote the book, she creates these characters, which are the other people she encounters in the institution, other patients or staff, and she writes them very colourfully. So, yeah, for example, one of one of the staff in Sid Lomans is called Ogress. Yes. Now, we can imagine what sort of a staff member that was. Exactly. Not all, but there are other staff members who are quite pleasant and yep. quite gentle and, and treat her nicely. Yes, yes, there is. It's it's not all, she's not treated badly all of the time. Um, but bringing all those characters to life uh, through Hannah's imagination felt like it was a theatrical piece to me. All right, we're going to get you to perform a piece, but maybe we'll, we'll ask uh, Jill to give us the context of where Hannah is at at this point, that we're, the, the piece we're about to hear. So Hannah is moved through the buildings of St Lomans several times, and this is one of her moves. It's just after one of her moves, and she's also had a treatment, and uh, it does give the listener some idea of the context and the setting of St. Lomans, which is why we picked it for... for is this for when that. she's in the part of the building referred to as No Hope Hold? It's not quite. She's getting there. She's she, on her way. She's she, on her way. She's to in no the Long Hope Trench Hope. Block. She's in Long Trench Block, which yeah. is kind of a stepping stone and not very nice stepping stone into No Hope yeah, Hold. And I think No Hope Hold sort of it tells you if you're there, yeah. there's not much for you afterwards. Well, exactly. So she's in Long Trench Block at this stage and explaining her situ- situation to us. And it's Andrea Scott as, as Hannah. They must think I have improved. 